Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and uh, <laughs> did you see that direct last night? I bet you did. If for whatever reason you didn't and you want a little bit more context, then click that card up there to watch the whole thing, because my goggly goodness was it a good one. But yes, I'm here today because I'm going to tell you my thoughts, my feelings, my reaction, if you like, to last night's direct, um, unless you're watching this in the future, in which case, the night before's direct, or if you're watching it further in the future, the night before, the night before's direct. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling, let's dive right into things. Hope you don't mind if I refer to my notes. Okay, so first of all, we've got WarioWare Gold. That was, um, that was unexpected. To be honest, pretty much all the 3DS stuff was unexpected. Um, it's a WarioWare game. It's supposed to be the biggest one ever. I've got a weird, horrible, um, Mario Party The Top 100 vibe from it. So hopefully it's better than that, but it looks like fun. But my 3DS is gathering dust at the moment. The Switch is where it's at for me. Um, we've also got Dylan's Deadhead... Uh, dead, dead, dead heat breakers, not dead head. This is a funny one for me because I never played Dylan's Rolling Western, so I don't really know that much about the character full stop. It looks a bit like Sonic's, um, I mean, Nintendo's answer to Sonic. I kind of ruined that. But it looks vaguely interesting. I mean, I don't think in five years' time anyone's going to be saying, hey, do you remember that Dylan game for 3DS? That was great, wasn't it? Just, it's just going to fall out of memory. It just feels like something for the 3DS because the 3DS is apparently still alive. We've also got Mario and Luigi, Bowser's Inside Story, plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey. Um, again, it's another Mario and Luigi remake. It feels like a bit of a, a little bit of a rushed effort, but I, I, I'm not gonna hang around on it. Um, we've also got Detective Pikachu, which we knew about, and you know, there wasn't really any new information in there, but it's good that it was mentioned, because that is a very different game that's being released on the 3DS. We've also got the, the big surprise of the 3DS lineup, Luigi's Mansion! <laughs> Who saw Luigi's Mansion getting remade on the 3DS? It's just... I, I, I was absolutely flabbergasted by it, to be honest. Um, it looks like... well, it's, it's Luigi's Mansion on the 3DS. It was surprising. Alright, we got that all out of the way. Let's talk about the Switch stuff, the reason we're all here. Kirby Star Allies, the Dream Allies that they've got there. The new ones with free updates and stuff like that. Um, I knew about the Dream Allies because I've got the game, and uh, but I couldn't talk about them, which was a bit bit of a bit of a nuisance. But even so, now I can because it's public knowledge. And yeah, it it looks fun. You know, it just looks like additional stuff in a Kirby game. It's good. And then we've got Akami HD. I have heard so many good things about Akami. I have been desperate to play it for a very very long time now, and now I finally have a proper excuse to, uh, because it's coming to the Switch, and that means I should be able to get it, because it's on the Switch. Sushi Striker the Way of Sushido, I don't really... This didn't really interest me that much. I mean, it, it looks fine, um, but I just don't think it's my kind of game. Uh, it's coming out to 3DS as well. I've seen a lot of people are really excited about it, so that's a good thing, but for me personally, eh, it's, it's the game. It's not really any more than that. What else we got? Octopath Traveler. Oh, now this is a game I'm interested in. I'm not entirely surprised that they just dropped the project part and called it Octopath Traveler in the end, but it looks like a genuinely interesting fresh take on the RPG formula. I played the demo, loved it to death, so really looking forward to this. Really pleased that it was featured, because I wasn't entirely sure it would be in the uh, predictions video I did with Rabid Luigi, which you can check out if you want some retrospective predictions for some reason. Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna annoy a lot of people when I say that I've never played a No More Heroes game simply because it's just a game I haven't got around to playing. Um, I do fully intend to play them, don't get me wrong, um, but I've got so many games. This one looks good though, it looks interesting. Um, it just looks like a really fun, solid, well-designed, great art style game, you know. It's got a sort of an arcadey feel to it, which um, is obviously intentional, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to finding out more because it's Suda51 and he always does good stuff. Dark Souls Remastered Amiibo. That's all. It's, it's the best thing until the last thing I talk about. Then we had Mario Tennis Aces, and Mario Tennis Aces had a lot of time dedicated to it, which is understandable because, you know, they're trying to push it as a fairly big game, and, you know, these directs happen fairly often. So yeah, why not focus on a big game that is brand new, not a port, coming to Switch later on? And they did, and Chain Chomp is the best character. There was also Zone Shot, which um, allows specific aiming, which I thought was really good. It sort of added an additional level of skill to Mario Tennis, which 
wasn't really possible before. You could sort of guide where your ball's going to go, but this time you can actually choose exactly where it's going to go, which is good, which is a good thing. I think it looks like fun. Rackets now have three hits and returning them and stuff breaks them. I thought, again, they're, they're introducing loads of really interesting mechanics to make it a really, well, different um, tennis game to give it, you know, the fact that it's Mario Tennis more of an identity than just having Mario in it like Ultra Smash. There's also zone speed, which allows you to slow down time. You know, you, you saw it, you saw it. I'm not here to discuss exactly what happened. I'm just here to say how I feel about it. Overall, I feel that Mario Tennis Aces is, is looking up to be really good. I really like the fact that they included classic rules as well, um, because all the new stuff looks great, but at the same time, I might just want to play a classic game of tennis, and it allows that option, which is uh, super duper. Oh, and they've got proper online as well. Do you remember Ultra Smash, where you couldn't play online with friends. Why? Also, the swing mode, I genuinely didn't think they'd do a, you know, Wii Sports style tennis waggle controls thing, but they did, and, you know, fair play, it looks like it could be a good laugh, but at the same time, very pleased that it's not shoehorned in and it's not being forced. You can just, you know, play with buttons if you like, but my um my soon-to-be mother-in-law, I say soon-to-be, it's gonna be some time, who, I'll be honest, is not the biggest fan of video games, to say the least, is very into her tennis and really loves the look of this game. So, well done, Nintendo. You've got one extra person interested in Mario Tennis. Then we moved back into the Switch stuff, and we had Captain Toad coming to the Switch, which I'm not surprised about at all, the extra stages and stuff. What I am surprised about is the fact that it's coming to the 3DS as well. I mean, I've not got a problem with it at all. I'd be mad if I did, but the 3DS is, I just, I don't, I maybe, maybe they're just covering their bases in case the Switch was a flash in the pan, which I don't think it was, but lordy. Undertale coming to the Switch. This was a big surprise for me because I just sort of thought, well, maybe Undertale's run its course. Um, but I personally haven't played it yet. I've specifically tried to keep myself apart from it as much as possible because I always intended to play it in the future and now I've got the perfect excuse and I can play it on the go because it's on the Switch. It's good stuff. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. We all heard the rumors. I genuinely didn't think they were true. I thought, you know, okay, well, Crash Bandicoot was a Sony exclusive, but I didn't think it would actually come to other platforms, let alone the Switch. Um, proves how wrong I was. Uh, could be good. I've only, I own, I think I own a Crash Bandicoot game on Xbox, and I think I've played it. More games for the Switch, you can't really argue, can you? Little Nightmares! I'd heard about this game, and uh, I didn't really know anything about it. And watching the trailer, it looks freaky as hell, and I love the look of it, so I'm really looking forward to playing that one. South Park The Fractured But Whole, yes. Yes. Again, rumors. Is every rumor for the Switch gonna come true now? I don't have that much of a vested interest in South Park, personally. I've never really seen it, um, but I've heard good things about this game, more so about the Stick of Truth, so maybe we'll be getting that as well in the future. I don't know, but yeah, you know, again, more games for the Switch. You know, well, critically, uh, you know, critically acclaimed games coming to the Switch. You can't possibly be angry about that. We got a release date for Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. It's the 18th of May. It's gonna be, sh sh should be fun, should be fun. Then there was the ARMS news, which is the US and Canada online open, which is, you know, it's good news. You know, it's nice to see that they're really still desperately trying to support ARMS, because I think ARMS was well received, but people sort of fell out of love with it quite quickly, which is a real shame, because I love ARMS. Um, so it's good to see they're still trying to push it. Um, the fact that they're not doing any more content is a bit of a shame, but um, also there's a new test punch. So if you don't have ARMS, Try it, please. Why do people not play it? Then we had Splatoon 2 version 3.0, a free update with a hundred new pieces of gear, three new levels, including Camp Triggerfish, which uh, <laughs> it's about damn time. Also rank X, which goes above S+. They just they just keep increasing the, the rank and level caps for everything, don't they? Callie's going to appear in Octo Canyon, probably when you've completed the main campaign. So um, that's a thing as well. We don't know what happens, something about like an Inkipedia? I don't know. And then there was the big reveal, Octo Expansion, paid DLC, I think it cost $20, or $19.99. New single player campaign, you get to play as an Octoling in multiplayer if you complete it. I, 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 I love the idea of this, and it, it seems like a really meaty addition without actively changing too much about the multiplayer, which is great, because paid DLC that actively affects the multiplayer, like map, 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 
there. Like, map packs, I think, is kind of broken. I, like, I remember it from the Halo years, uh, when I used to play Halo loads and loads and loads, and some people would have the maps, and if you downloaded the maps, it'd be like, yeah, all these new maps, but you could only get them, uh, only use them if you were playing against people who also had the new maps. Kind of doesn't work. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. You can buy it now, and you'll get some additional uh, gear that you can use immediately, which is, like, Inkling-themed. It looks... Uh, the Inkling. Oh, Octoling. Oh, it's too early. It looks good. I'm really looking forward to it. Not as much as the next thing, though. <laughs> Finally! All right, that was a bit over the top. It's only Smash Bros. But even so, oh, my immediate reaction last night was really embarrassing. I was proper shrieking like a child because I'm an embarrassment. We all knew we were going to get Smash because, I mean, it's, it's just it just makes too much sense not to have Smash. But to finally have it confirmed and to just have it done in that way, to have the inkling appear and have the Smash icon in its... Ah! I remember when I first saw it and I thought it was the original trailer for Splatoon back in 2014, was it? Where you, you had the blue and the orange inkling and swimming through because it looked very similar to that uh, to begin with and then it was slightly different and I was thinking to myself, what, are they, they going to bring the original Splatoon to the Switch? That's madness. Why would you bother doing that? What else could it be? And then it just sort of, in the back of my, I just, I just, smash. Could it be smash? And then the logo reflected in the eye and I just, oh, it's just, as much as anything, it was just pure relief because for so long I've just wanted a smash announcement and they bamboozled us. They made us think it was Splatoon related and then the Smash logo, and oh, it's just, it's, it's so good to finally know, you know? Just so good to finally know that we're getting a Smash on the Switch. And I knew, we knew we were going to get it. We knew we were going to get it. But just to finally have it confirmed and to know that the Inklings are in there, oh, it's just, oh, it's just, it's so good. It was also really interesting to see the Breath of the Wild Link as a silhouette, um, because I genuinely, when when I was thinking about Smash for Switch, I was thinking to myself, they can't surely go back to the original Link, you know, with the green cap and everything, because that's a little bit old, old hat now, if you'll pardon the pun. It would feel like taking a step back to go back to that Link. I mean, it may well be that it's a separate character having Link in his Breath of the Wild gear, or maybe it's just a costume. I don't know. Breath of the Wild introduced so many new and interesting ideas that, um, you know, the possibility of having new attacks and things like that is too great to ignore. It's going to be exciting, whatever it is. It's going to be exciting. And the fact that they showed Mario, maybe we'll get some Cappy stuff. Or maybe they were just showing Mario because he's the figurehead of Nintendo. Oh, but anyway, that is that 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 was how I felt about the direct. It was all it was all pretty good. It was all pretty good overall. A little bit, you know, like the 3DS stuff. I don't have that much interest in, which sounds terrible, but I have just kind of fallen out of love with the 3DS. But the Switch stuff was pretty damn good. And then Smash! And, you know, the Splatoon 2 stuff was completely unexpected. I didn't expect anything that big to come to Splatoon 2, so I'm really pleased it is. But Smash, it's all about Smash, isn't it? It's all about Smash. But anyway, what did you think about it? Did you like the Direct? Do you like that we're getting Smash? And if you don't, what's wrong with you? Let us know your thoughts by leaving a comment in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you do that through that subscribe button? <laughs> and be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,